Lucky Sin on you. This shit. This shit. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus. Already. Some of this shit. That's good. That's cutie. Uh, yeah, a bunch of people, and by a bunch, I mean three people this time, mm -hmm. messaged me about how to rig that tandem tube so it doesn't do the, the inchworm effect. We're not going to cover that tonight. Not enough time. Just not enough time. Maybe at the end, we'll see how it goes. We'll just, we'll see. Otherwise, I'll make a short video tomorrow when I'm at the shop. I could just go live at the shop and I can kind of walk you guys through it. Let's see if this works. Hey Siri, set a reminder tomorrow at 11 a.m. to show people how to do that shit. <clears throat> Done. On the old watch. <sighs> Looking sleek. Look yeah. Oh, where did the mullet go? Where did the mullet it's, go? It's gone. She gone. Woke up one day, wanted a haircut, went and got haircut. Party's over. Have haircut now. Um, kind of like it. I got it short enough to where I don't have to get a haircut for a while. We'll see how it shakes out. Hats fit better again. So the fucking... I gotta fucking raise it up, don't I? To get that fucking to get the thing above get the, the fly yeah. above the comments. Yeah, I forgot. Ugh. What's up, Jeremiah? Yeah, you handled the comment shit. You know. Congrats on your tattoos, by the way. Those things are like pretty sick. Did you see Jeremiah's arm tattoos? Yeah, he texted me. <laughs> I was the first person to know. Oh, okay. Not his wife or anything. She was probably there. No, oh, let's see. Said Vice. This guy at Media says, I love Gabe Golby. Good, you should. He's, he's going to be a real good guy. And that's not sarcastic. He's guide in training and only being 18. He's got a pretty good jump on everything. So... Um, Oh yeah, and congrats, <clears throat> if I could cough and talk. Uh, our buddy Spencer is now at the shop to join oh. this crew. Cat's out of the bag. Cat's out of the bag. Um, he worked at a local shop, he got a lot of experience. He came over to us, um, whatever. We're, we're happy to have him. And um, <clears throat> so yeah, we'll, we'll have a coast guide going forward. He's got some programs out there for the winter. He's got a pretty uh, good Sea Run Cutthroat program in the summer, if people want to get out there. Shop said you weren't looking dapper or what. I mean, the shop didn't have anything to do with it. Were we going to have a long conversation about my hair? About hair? Or, or, or a short one? Or, or none? Let's let's go with none. So that will be a good addition. Sea Run Cutthroat, some coast stuff. Spencer's a good dude. We got a pretty good team. Solid team. Yeah. Myself, Colby, Brian Light. We're uh, motor boys. Um... Yeah, one more voice. Um, and now Spencer, and then probably within next summer, Gabe will be doing his first trips. Uh, if you know me, you know I hate children. I don't know. I get along with Gabe. He's pretty mature for his age, uh, and he's a good fisherman. He's 18. He's not a child anymore, right? Well, I mean, compared... By the definition of the law. I mean, when you go like, oh, you were, like he said the other day, he's like, you were born in the 1900s. I was like, fucking... Pump the brakes, bro. Not cool. We well, okay. could say he was smart. Yeah. But he's got good fly tying abilities. It's sweet. So he's going to be doing a bunch of warm water stuff. Um, I'm showing him everything I know, which is not much. But he's going to be doing the carp game probably 2025. So we'll have two carp guides, maybe more. So that's cool shit to look forward to coming out of the shop. Um, what else we got? Anything new at the shop? Um... You doing any classes this winter or flight? Yeah, I'm trying to get an entomology class together for the I mean, trout nerds. If I didn't have hate trout, that would be cool. Learn you some bugs. Mm -hmm. um, are we doing a steelhead fly tying class? Or are you gonna do that? You am I gonna do that? Who's gonna, you wanna do that? I don't wanna do that. Yeah. You can do that. I can do that. I'll if there's to, interest, I'll I'm have to happy to do that. Teach you to tie up steelhead fly first and then you can take that. If you Too bad. You're watching these Friday night flies. Oh, I've learned up, man. It's it's you know, it's like watching the uh, 
You learn it. Yeah, thing. that's a good sentence. That's two, a good sentence. That, that, had, that had words in it. it. A smattering. Yeah. Um, Entomology riveting. See, yeah. this is not a trout crew, and yeah, I just don't it's, care. It's, it's fine. fine. There's somebody out there. There's somebody out there for everybody. A lot of naval gazers. Uh, oh, I did want to ask. Um, I, who's this corn dog cowgirl? She fucking comes in with the hottest comments, and she just was real nice. Or maybe him. It might be a it's him. a her or them. It's a her. It's okay, a they. them. Um, her. Somebody said, "What you tying?" I I don't want to tie this. I'm tying them for a buddy that's going to Haida Gwaii. It's basically the same marabou fly that I fish all winter. Um, it's pink, but pink, but it's on a fucking shank. It's got a little hot bead Ooh, tucked up in there. Yeah. I, I hate tying on shanks, and, and, and I'll hate it this whole time, and I'll go through why I hate it. Tie on a tube. Be a grown-up. There's benefits to both. Okay, so I was asking people before you got here, what's the benefit of tying on a shank? Uh, it's not neutrally buoyant. There is some sinkage to it. Okay, so what's... Which is nice. Oh, so it gets deeper than a tube? Well, some would argue that the sink, like, it depends on when you want to engage your swing, right? And do your men and stuff. And like, if it's, uh, you're letting your sink tip to drop everything down, or do you want some weight on your fly? But I will say that a, a shank weighs more than a tube. That was maybe the more worst words. fucking answer I've ever heard. <laughs> I, what, you just I said did. a bunch of steelhead uh, stuff, but like, yeah. people that are watching, they're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. It doesn't, it doesn't. make sense. You know, you it's like when you fly, watch how much you uh, want to sink with the sink, and you get the swing fly. And get, it's it's like when you watch Trump with the uh, closed captions on, yeah, and you actually read it, you're like, that's that not, didn't even make sense. None of those words made sense. Um, they were words, though. They're, they, they were words. What about the multiple of weights you can put multitude. on multitude? Oh, yeah. multitude. Speaking of words, I got a GED. Okay, everybody, let's just throw that out there. I had to pay for the it. speaking part. Uh, yeah, I mean, you can put all those weights on a shank too, because the diameter is small. You just build a thread dam on either side. But yeah, I just I was saying before on the intro on my page. I'm not saying it's the right way. I'm just saying this is what I don't fish shanks. By yeah. the way, either I fish tubes. Yeah, I just so if you hang up on the bottom or or you hang up on a stick or a rock or something like that, I'm pretty uh, particular about when I'm guiding. I don't really care when I'm fishing, but when I'm guiding, I want that hook tippy top out of the pot out of the packet sharp. So if you hook a, a branch or something, it's in the branch. I always test it, and if it's not like ouchy sharp, like tacky, just swap it out because. You know, you get all those takes in the day. It doesn't really matter. Just kidding. Oh. But if you got one fish that climbs on, you want it sharp. You want it to know it's not the hook. So that, that's the reason I do that. A lot of people um, make the error of not having a long enough stinger. So then you can't replace the hook on that where the tube system is set up to literally just, oh, change the hook, cut, tie, done. Okay. I'm saying, doesn't that make the idea a shank sinks better, a moot point? Yeah. I mean, I I don't. When I go towards steelheading, my goal, the way I set it up is I, I use the angle of the cast and how I mend and the sink tip to get my fly down. So even if you have a really heavy fly, I mean, even if it drops faster than the sink tip, once the swing is engaged, like that's the, that, that's the thing is too many people think about, oh, I got to get the fly deep. The fish are looking up. So like... I, I don't know. Maybe that's maybe I'm wrong, and everybody else is a way better steelheader. I don't know, but we catch plenty of fish doing it this way. And I like having a light fly to cast. That you can cast it further. You can be Green. more accurate. It's more enjoyable. Look, if we're looking for that one aggressive fish, they're going to move multiple feet for your fly in the winter time if they want to eat it. Yeah, there may be a picky fish out there that the fucking dogs. All five of them. Four. 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 If they, whatever. I don't care. Do whatever you want. <laughs> We're not telling you to use yeah. shanks. Yeah. Um, ouchy sharp. <laughs> That's, that was that was your your quality rating. Is it's not ouchy sharp. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not arguing, just chatting. No, no, I'm not berating you. I'm just. Um, you're wrong. No, you're not wrong. I mean, Trevor <clears throat> Kovic, one of the you know probably better steelhead guides out there for sure. That's all he fishes is shanks, but he also fishes flies with dumbbell eyes, which I don't do. But he also fishes different rivers, so. Whatever works for him is going to work. It's just trial and error. Our rivers, meaning the Sandy and the Clack that I fish, um, they're not necessarily deep or it's not this one specific 
bucket that you got to get into ASAP. Um, broad water, man. Yeah, broad water. So, you know, like I was saying last week, most of the problem is the way people um, set their fly up. They don't. And so I could go into a fucking TED talk about this, but most people, you don't realize if there's an overhead drone video in you and you had a big white fly, your fly is not fishing for the first half of your swing, even though you think it is. <laughs> I promise you it's not. And a good way to test that, you're like, this guy doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Probably, but this I do. Next summer or wherever, or go out in the wintertime and bring a Scandi and put on a skater and cast it like you would a winter fly. Cast your angle, make your mend, and see what the fuck it does. It is going to be your... Scandy's going to be at a 45, your leader's going to be a little turned, and your fly's going to be up river, and it's going to go move down river like this till it comes under tension. It's going to skip, scatter, accelerate it, pass those outside fish where they sit. They're, they're never going to eat that. And then, yeah, once it straightens out, it's going to track. But You'd be shocked how steep of an angle you have to cast downstream for that thing to to, to land and start immediately. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, the, the key to summer steel is to learn how to cast further because you got <laughs> you got a quarter down way, way more than you think. Um, you can do that. People are like, well, I don't just do that winter steel. And well, you can, but like the first maybe half of your swing, that fly is getting pulled down by the sink tip. That's the other thing that people don't realize. Myself, I thought too, is when the swing is engaged and you have tension, that, that fly is going to come up a little bit in the current because it's under tension. It's not true it slowly sinks the entire way. It just, I've been up on cliffs and I'm like, oh, orange fly, it, it lands, they mend it, it starts, you know, it comes tight, starts swinging and about halfway through, I can't see anymore. So it's sinking more. It, it, it swings to the inside, the inside is always the slowest. So that stands correct. Yeah, and it's just the sink tip, even in fast water, water. Even in fast water, it's gonna sink a little bit continually. Um, if you learn to cast past where you think that furthest outside fish is sitting, whether it's a rock or a seam, and you lift and pull way up river with your rod out, it, it kind of straight, it has that stuff swing around way in the outside. Then you drop your rod tip and that fly sinks in a straight line. It gets tight and it swings across um, the run evenly and deep and slow right off the bat. So you're gonna catch those fish on the outside that everybody else isn't catching because they're not showing the fly. And I've seen the drone footage in Alaska that I took years ago. That's what turned me on to this whole Mega Men thing and, and, and setting your fly up. And there's lots of steelheaders that have come to that um, uh, knowledge in different ways, but that's it. Um, if you do that, I promise you, you're gonna catch more winter steelhead. I'm not the greatest steelheader in the world, but I have picked plenty of pockets in my time mm -hmm. doing that. And also when there's a really, um, good run that you want to fish, say it's dead horse, dead cow, power lines, sandy and clack, whatever it is. When you're coming down, watch people fish and how they're casting. Um, if they're not doing that, and you'll know after you've done it enough, if that fly's not turning the corner on the outside and they're only fishing the inside, then they didn't fish that whole run. It's, it's brand new water. Lots of times <clears throat> prior years when I wasn't guiding as much, I would see a run I wanted to fish. I'd pull over above them. I'd eat a sandwich, have a beer, whatever. I'd see them walking back to their boat. I'd row down, say, hey, are you guys done? Can I fish this after you? And they would always look at me like I'm an idiot because they're like, we just went through it twice. And I'm like, yeah, that's fine. They would leave. A lot of times I'd come in, catch a fish. And it was always within the first like five seconds of the swing. So it's to fly way out in the middle where the fish is sit sitting kind of deep in a seam or a bucket or whatever. The fly was presented correctly, meaning it, it sank towards the fish on the outside. It got tight, it activated the feathers and it started swinging away and the fish ate it. They're not smart. They're very stupid steelhead. You have very to cast stupid. past them though. That's the, you yeah, you got, farther. you got to cast past where you think they're, fish, they're sitting, pull, up. pull up and pull way back and it straightens it out to where you think they're sitting. And as you drop your rod and feather that line in, followed by the sink tip and the scadget in your rod, when your rod gets tight, it's going to come across slow and it's going to be deep and you're going to catch more fish. Depends on the water as well, though. I mean, you know. Yeah, we're talking, you know, the deeper bucket, six to eight feet. If it's, you know, and people are like, oh, you got, you know, all these sink tips people have. Oh, I got to change it out to a T8 when I get into the tail out. I got to put a mo tip on the riffle. Fuck that bullshit. <laughs> Just if it's shallower. Summer steelhead fish, 45 straight down, it lands, it's gonna start swinging, you won't get hung up, even if you're fishing a weighted fly in T11, 
You mm -hmm. fish all that water. You're you're fishing the, the top of the riffle, same thing. 45 down, let it come across. You get into the bucket where you're like, oh, it's eight feet deep. Not maybe 90, but 70. Big up, pull it back, drop it. If you do it correctly, the max I can get is 10 seconds of free fall. I've done this speech a million times, but here we go. Max second, max, max 10 seconds of free fall. T11 sinks six, six to seven inches a sec, uh, second. Take the back half six inches, six times 10 is 60, 60 inches. So you're around that five feet, right? When your fly starts fishing in the way out. Flex that GED. I mean, this is just tens of thousands of hours of doing bullshit and being like, why the fuck aren't we catching them? <laughs> um, so do that. There you go. There's a free steel hitting tip and you didn't even have to subscribe to my page. There you go. Congratulations. Well, it's only 99 cents and I don't do anything extra yet, but eventually I'm going to do, I don't know, eventually if I'm going to, I'd like to, in a perfect world, I'd like to think I'd do stuff. Okay, we're done. See you guys next week. That's great. Yeah, uh, same time next week. Bye. Okay, so we're tying, um, whatever, just a marabou winter fly on a shank. It's got some weight. It's got some ostrich. It's got a brush, you know, I love, love them brushes and it just, whatever, it's, it's nothing special. It just, it, here we are, that's what we're doing. So whatever shank your choice, only fans, but for flood, only flies, perfect. I feel like, I feel like I owe you 99 cents for that. I mean, Venmo me, bro. Yeah, yeah I was just gonna say. So I, whatever, today I'm using the MSC <clears throat> shank to 45, I've got, I picked some of, the, some of these up from the shop, the Senya shank. It, it works too. I just, I don't know. These ones are cheaper and you can cut them and kind of adjust the length. So um, to get them in here, I just get some, you know, wire cutters or dikes or whatever like that. And um, kind of cover your eyes. Yeah, that's the other thing. Whenever snipping wire, just shut your eyes because one literally like hit me in the corner <laughs> like five years ago and I almost blinded myself. And then I cut, there's like the full shank. There's two sides. Oh, look at the fucking focus on this iPhone. Oh, no shit. You got that 15? I got that new update. There's like a max raw setting on the photos too now. Max raw. Yeah, I don't know. It's like raw, but maximum. And even then, rawer than raw. Even more raw. <laughs> and so then what I do is I cut that shank. Um, come on, focus, bro. Oh, did you cut the return? Yeah, the return a little bit shorter. Kind of like a Waddington. No, is it a Waddington? Oh, whatever it is. Yeah, part. I can't. Remember. But that way, I can put it straight, like there in the in the vice, which is what I want to do. Flex the game changer jaws. That's right. Um, that oh, that's the other thing too. Um, you don't need a tube adapter. You don't. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Um, oh yeah, so I'm gonna do a. Uh, uh, it's not an intro class. It's it's definitely advanced fly tying. This March at the shop for bass flies and musky flies. So it's going to be like three classes. You don't have to take all three. You can pick and choose or you can take all three, whatever it is. What do you guys want to tie? I was thinking of tying like a feather. Or, sorry, just a finesse game changer. Um, it's just a, it looks like a fish. It's one material, five shanks. It's the easiest game changer to tie really easy introductory but it's still kind of advanced um um based on just like regular woolly buggers and stuff and then there's a lot of trimming involved and we'll go over that and you can get waterproof uh markers and if you're artsy you can really make it look like anything you want um the second one i was sure. going to do um uh, well the jerk changer is so similar that i was going to just tell them the recipe like oh you just oh, do gotcha. this then a hook and it's the same material right yeah, I was thinking of doing do a fleeing cray, which are so fucking awesome. I mean, probably my favorite fly to tie. It's our, it's one articulation. There's a bunch of stuff going on there. It's invented by this guy, James Hughes, out of Schultz Outfitters in Ypsilanti, Michigan. Those guys kill it. Um, That's David, by the way, on Golabang. Oh, okay. He didn't just connect the dots. I thought it was possibly four and maybe February. two hours worth of time. Yeah, less May go than four. Maybe it only, whatever, I don't care if this does. I'm trying to record this mm -hmm. on the GoPro. Um, so we can upload it to the shop, uh, YouTube, and then you can watch it like wider screen, better quality, whatever. No one's going to watch it. <laughs> uh, what was I talking about? Oh yeah. So fleeing cray and then maybe the fleeing minnow. Mm. Also, if you look those up on YouTube, they're great. Or a musky fly, uh, because I got more and more interest of people wanting to chase musky. Um, 
I think I have two days available next year. If you want to hurt yourself and see a giant fish, hit me up. So, oh, go with number two. It's always the best. I thought, uh, four, whatever. It, maybe it's in February. Whatever. We've got time to plan it out. But I didn't want to just throw it up like, hey, we're tying this. So, like a good minnow pattern, that'll work for stripers or bass or redfish or whatever. Um, the fleeing cray is kind of specific for smallmouth and largemouth. Anything that Such eats cool fly though. Yeah. Oh, it's so cool. Anything that's eat, that eats crayfish is fucking rad. Um, and then yeah, fleeing minnow or a, a musky fly or something. Um, so anyways, I'm going to do that. I don't know how many people are going to sign up, but, um, it should be cool. If you want to learn how to tie badass warm water flies that will crush all summer for you. Um, while everybody's trying to catch trout while the fucking rivers are like 69 yeah. degrees. Nice. And, um, trying to, you know, swing up steelhead in May and June when it's just like an off season. This is a great, um, in person only, not online. Yeah. It's not online. So it's going to be at the shop. Um, and they're just fun to tie and they make you a better fly tire. Anyways, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So I got that shank. I cut it, whatever. Um, this is why I hate shanks, and this is the beginning of my I hate shanks rant. You got to get this shit out, and you got to put this on first. It's just a Spirit River, like 6.3. It's the biggest bead that they sell, just in hot pink for some weight. Again, not my flies. I don't fish a lot of weighted stuff, but here we go. I haven't seen Dave in a while. Nice. Yeah, so somebody just asked, you know, what are we cooking up? So for everybody that's joining late, and I have to keep showing this fly a thousand times, it's just a marabou fly with grizzly hackle and ostrich. It's got a great profile, <clears throat> if I do say so myself. It's got a brush in there. That's what gives it the shoulder. Easy to cast. Still wouldn't fish it. So you, put, <clears throat> you get that on, and then you got to get this bullshit intruder wire. You can use backing, or you can use um, braid, but... You kind of want it to be stiff so that the hook doesn't do a little floppy poppy. You know what I mean? Yeah, no jungle cock. I don't buy it. And I don't really like the way it looks. There, I said it. No fake jungle cock, too. That is the biggest cop out. Well, I just, I don't <clears throat> get the jungle cock. I mean, I don't think it looks that good. Kind of like the fascination with guinea. The polka dot guinea. Yeah, I, the guinea. Uh, the guinea, I I, I could see it working more, yeah, but uh, I've never a little been bit. one for jungle cock. Yeah, I know some people like it. Whatever, do your thing. If you like it, put it on there. They're wrong. I don't. I don't like it. So then you get the intruder wire, and you basically just thread it through. So you got this loop back here. This is all this extra shit that sucks. Mm -hmm. And you don't want it too short. If you've gone fishing with me, you know the Goldilocks. There's a lot of too hot, too cold, just right. This is a lot of too long, too short, just right. Just kind of get it balanced on there. <laughs> Fuck, did my thread go? See the orange thing around here? Orange, you glad you didn't forget oh, that? Oh, it's right here. There you go. This sucks, it never never goes right. You gotta get some thread on there so this thing doesn't unwind, but then you, you wanna get it back on top and straight. This thing wants to twist a little bit. Again. Uh, so many reasons why I don't like to do this, but here we are. So kind of wrap it towards the front, take both ends and put it through the eye of the shank. I have a soft spot for Guinea, can't lie there. Oh, oh it's going away, won't pay for the JC though. Fair enough, yeah. Jeremiah wants to know if beads are tube flies. Just a real short tube fly. If beads? If beads are, are the original tube fly. I don't think so because he's a being bead, cheeky. I know he is, but yeah. a bead is circular and a tube is kind of linear. So also that how-to loon post of tying an egg for steelhead got some fire. Well, I mean, Schultz also did like a steelhead thing, and they're tying like egg patterns up, and <laughs> yeah. it's like, look, People I'm like, like Ooh. I mean, yeah. look, I'm going back again. I don't care. Do whatever you want, but it is it is stupid. So you get that thing really buried in there, get all those thread wraps a popping. Glue. Move that bead up, I don't know, an amount. Oh, you put it in the middle, huh? Yeah, well, not quite middle. Got to have it neutrally balanced. Because you don't want the bead at the front. Like, nothing I hate more than somebody tying a tube fly, just a regular marabou tube, not a, a leech. The leech, I don't know why. I think the cone looks good in the front. 
fine. I just like to finish them like that. But the marabou, and then they stick the the bead at the front. I just I don't like the way it looks. So that's from my days tying with. If you guys remember Matt McCrary, um, he's always high. He would always hide the bead in there, and the fly just looks cleaner. And the uh, weight in the middle, it kind of sinks like this instead of noses down. Do I think the steelhead give a fuck? Mm -mm. No, I don't. So that, I kind of go under it a couple times. Just, <clears throat> you really want that thing to be straight. Because if, if your intruder wire is not straight, it'll turn your hook. And that drives me fucking nuts. <laughs> Again, why I don't like the shank flies. So then back over that bead, and that's kind of where it sits. Everybody on board? What kind of dog did you get? Did I get? I've had him for like five years. Are you talking to Colby? Yeah. Oh. My dog? I've had my dog. He's had his dog too. I got a golden retriever black lab. He's like 90 pounds. His name's Good Night. He's five. And I got a dumpster daisy that I found that's like 35 pounds. She's kind of house fat, but she's part cattle dog. So they're just kind of thick. And her name is Rudy Jean or Ruru -Ru Bean. Chichonky. House fat. House fat. Um, okay, here we go. So we got that. Yay. I like brushes. Dubbing balls are stupid. Just going to say that too. They, they come apart. They don't stay up. They don't really do anything. Maybe they help build a shoulder, but why? Just use a brush. I mean, you get six of these bad boys in a bunch of colors. It's on wire. And they make a really good shoulder. So I just tie it in right next to that bead and we start a wrapping. And just like anything, you wanna, as you palmer that around, you wanna get those fibers going, you guessed it, that way. And again, if you've watched any of the Friday Night Flies, there isn't a certain amount of wraps. I don't care, you can do one, you can do 50. Just figure out what looks good to you. I'm not even counting. I'm just looking. I want enough of it to be there to be a shoulder, but I don't want like an excessive amount because that will also kind of hinder the sink rate if you've got just a big old brush head in there. So someone's asking, is uh Goodnight the name of your dog an inspiration from Charles Charles Goodnight? You familiar with Charles Goodnight? I'm not. Um me neither. His name was from an old Western that I saw, and one of the guy's names in the Western was named Goodnight. That's where it came from. I don't participate on these. I just hang out and drink booze. Occasionally, and... Colby ties, but... Um, maybe next week. Maybe next week. We'll do like a bomb dress or something. There you go. And you get your shitty scissors, because you're cutting wire. These I've had for like three years. Whatever, they just cut wire. Brushes, yes. Brushes are awesome. Yeah. They've kind of replaced the whole dubbing wad of bullshit. Yeah, they just, they hold together forever. They're, um, why is this spinny spinny so much? I like that. Spinny spinny? There we go. And yeah, they just give you a nice big profile to, to build on. Now, schlopping, okay? You want to look for <clears throat> like the webbiest shit you got. Um, because you're going to use the bottom of the feather. Prepare to throw out half of it. Oh, yeah. I'm throwing away feathers left and right. So, yeah, okay. Whoa. So, like, that kind of <laughs> chickaboo stuff where it gets fluffy, like right there. I'm not meaning to flip you off, but, like, that stuff right there, that, that's what you want, the, the chickaboo stuff. So, I'll pull a little off the bottom. I used to do marabou ostrich and then more marabou um i just like them a little more sparse so tie that guy in oh somebody said tie redfish flies i mean maybe purple and black i can't tie jeff's fly because he'll freak out he thinks he's got like the top secret fly <laughs> like everybody fishes it bro he's like no it's this is gold it does work really well but they'll also eat pretty much anything Okay, so just thanks. Oh. Just throw that on the ground anywhere. It's fine. It's only an hour of my life. Sorry, Joe. Again, however many turns till it looks good. You can overdo it. You can, but not really. 
And so just get all that fluff over there. How's the tequila soda? You know, it's very nice. It's pretty refreshing. It's very refreshing. Yeah, it's nice. And then, whatever. Why do I do this? I don't know. It just looks a little Brush bit better. Brush the hair. Brush the hair. Fidelity, you think it's getting hot? It could be. Well, not down here. It um, it got hot when I tried to film some musky. It just would turn off. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like... It's like, I can't handle this musky fly. I'm out. No, when I was fishing for musky, I was trying to get some eats. Oh, 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 you're outside with the GoPro. I was guiding, yeah, and usually yeah, yeah, that outside. Yeah, you were tying a musky fly on the GoPro. Your dad's deaf. Oh, he's so fucking deaf. Jesus. Like, yeah. But, you know, he's alive, so that's good. Someone asked, yeah, that, that's, that's better than mine. Mm -hmm. um, someone asked if they heard jazz in the background, and there's no jazz here. There's no jazz. That was probably Ryan, who is a jazz musician. <laughs> I'm guessing that came from that him. Was, I think that was him, man. Yeah. There you go. And then cut some ostrich again, however many you like, more than four, I would say. And like, you you want it, you want the tips to be, this is like, okay, whatever. It doesn't have to be this critical, but you want them to be just like a little bit past the end of the loop. If they're too long, it looks stupid, uh, but it also will foul up in your, in your, um, hook. in your hook. Yeah. So, and I don't put them in a dubbing loop or in that bullshit and I don't, you know, Oh, let me put one and space them out. Just save the time. You know, learn to cast better or to set up your fly with the men. I promise you it's not the fly while you're not catching steelhead. Oh, shit. What's up, Mike Sturza? Stirs in the house. Stirs in the house. <clears throat> did I tell you that? Um, did you see that photo of that guy that caught the tiger muskie in the cowlitz? No. I didn't. I mean, we must have huh. been on different vacations. Yeah, I was launching at the cowlitz. I wonder was. Some guys twitching jigs or coho and fucking... Foul hook tiger musky. It's like 36 inches. What? In the callots. What? Yeah. Sick. I know. It was rad. So we're doing that now. I think right there at the boat ramp, you could probably catch a couple. Mm. Mm. Oh, I, yeah. Just right there. Below barrier. Barrier. Yeah. So you got both sides. Ta-da. And then some flash. It was just fuchsia or whatever you want to call it, right? Very <laughs> pink. Yeah, um, I mean, if you're looking for throwaway guide flies or just flies in general, if you tie this on a tube, it takes like half the time because of the setup. But if you like shanks, um, David's like, when isn't Colby on vacation? No shit. Do you know who I'm sitting next to? Captain Vacation. I've earned it. I earned it. That's right. I think you've actually been on vacation more than I have this year. Yeah, this year. Well, it's because from all that money you're making from guiding. <laughs> Before that. Mm -hmm. And then just trimming, whatever. You don't want it super long. You want like the same length as the... It looks basically like a fish taco right now. It's exactly It's like a fish taco with marabou, See, essentially. And some grizzly hack. A pink taco. Yes, Kobe. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. And then we just got whatever. Hot pink. Whatever. Um... Brian Sylvie in the house. If you look, you want to look for the feathers that have, um, that are wispier. You don't want like that woolly bugger marabou shit. Long, wispy. Does it have to be? No. But if you're gonna. Prepare to throw out half of those too. Yeah. Hashtag yeah. hairline. That's fly time. <clears throat> then I basically strip off and that's what you got left. There's a close up. There's a close up. You get a look. You get a, you look. get a look. You get a look. You get a car. And then tie it in. Some people tie stem first. I don't know those Ooh, people. Weird. Yeah, I've seen it. I'm like, what are you doing? Um, I want the last fibers of this feather to be the longest, so I want to start with the tip. So throw that guy on. Bingo, bango. Cut her off. Get in there. Did Parrish say something about your haircut last week? Who's Paris? Robert Parrish. Oh, Parrish. Parrish. Uh, maybe? I don't mm. know. I don't really keep track of comments on my haircut, but maybe? Seems like you do. I do not. Stem first is weird. Yeah, it is. Stem it is. And it's like some of the stuff gets caught sometimes. Just, just rip it out with this guy. 
if you lose a one single feather, whatever, it's not going to be the end of the world. I think someone could also overdo it on the marabou. Oh, for yeah. sure. Like that's something to watch out for. But I'm definitely a, a, a more is better. I, you know, you hear a lot of guys like keep it sparse. It's like, mm, okay. And I get Goldilocks. Yeah. And like, you know, a lot of people like to do that. But if you don't have enough, it doesn't move that well in the water. I mean, these things, they smash down quite a bit in the water. Um, there's no real right way. It depends on what the marabou and, you know, you got lots of guys do oh, that. Fuck, yep. Mills. What the shop schloppen's looking like, what your shoulder looks like. That's just anything. You just got to – I keep thinking there's a hook on here, so I'm like going you, Yeah, I know. You're like <laughs> – baby. So, like, this is what we got going right now, everybody. Ouchy sharp. Oh, God. Ouchy sharp. Yeah, so, like, you know, it's it's coming along, right? I'll get one for the GoPro. But, yeah, so that's kind of what we're working with. And then you can be done there if you want, but, you know, I like that. Grizzly hackle. It's not just for girls' hair anymore. This one's getting pretty More pink. That one's looking sad. Yeah, it's I picked through this one pretty good. Um because I like them longer, but I don't really think I have that many <laughs> longer good. ones left in me. So, <laughs> and then this is the key. I always tell people this whenever I do this. Jason from Portland Fly Shop showed me this years ago. Because I'm like, how do you get them to stand up? Because I would always tie them on the side. The key is you got to get the uh, feather on the side here. But the stem goes across towards me. And that's how you oh. get them to prop up like that. Like that. Man, I can't even keep up with the comments now. Uh, you ever fish, you ever try the Fish Hunter Spay okay. Marabou? Uh, no. No. Is it good? Who knows? Mmm. Fish Hunter. Let's see. Fish Hunter. Yeah, Fish Hunter was, um, that was before Nature Spirit. So Nature Spirit bought Fish Hunter. Oh. Uh -huh. So yes, we do. Nature Spirit Marabou's the shit. Hairline. Mm. Oh, I read that as Trout Hunter. Because I'm... A broken... That's funny because you said Trout Hunter. Yeah, yeah, And I still I, heard it as Fish yeah, Hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm a steelheader and you're we a trout We got guy. there. We got there. Uh, Jordan Taylor, how's the know. dating life been? Any new boys or girls peeling your interest? On me? <laughs> yeah. Um, I uh, was, uh, was kind of hanging out with this one gal, um, just as friends. It ain't going to happen. Um, she's too hot. Just fucking... just. Dicks getting thrown at her left and right. I, I can't compete with that shit. I can't. I mean, we're still friends and we fish, but it's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, um, I don't know. I'm talking to this one gal right now. I, I've never online dated in my life. I just didn't really believe in it. I'm just like, oh, it'll happen naturally. I don't really have the time. But then I was like, you know what? I'm going to see what's out there. And apparently... It's bad. No. Men that are in their 40s that aren't completely disgusting i'm not saying i'm not disgusting i'm just saying i'm not completely disgusting and that don't have kids they're sought after i mean <clears throat> but yeah it's been going pretty well um it'd be like how uh, how to tie a fly in eight parts yeah exactly fucker so yeah i'm just doing that um yeah nick, we'll just nick rowell in the house what's up oh nick? fuck yeah um, shout out Nick Rao, anybody watching that wants to fish the coast Good dude. and have a fucking awesome time, hit that dude up because he's a G and his flies are much prettier than mine. That fly is pink, pink, like a rooster's dink. I mean, can't argue with that. This one hackles being a bitch all of a sudden now. What do you do? What about your trip this fall? Talk about the GT or the sheep shed? Sheep's head. Oh, the sheep, sheep shed? The sheep shed. I'm going to retie this one in. Uh, trip to New Orleans was terrific. Um, we were bummed that Mr. Colby Olson couldn't make it. But yeah, he, more vacation. Yeah, he had to go do, I don't know, he had to wash a horse or something like that. Kind of hard when it's the two of us that go. Yeah. Shop oh. doesn't doesn't love it. Yeah, the shanks here kind of can be kind of weird. No spooky. There we go. Um, yeah, <clears throat> caught the piss out of redfish. Everybody had a blast. We had a shrimp boil. I stayed an extra week. Hung out with my buddy Jeff. Um, had some good weather days. That place is great. Um, 
And then I just got word from Flywater Travel when I talked to him today that we are putting together a, like a couple's trip in 2025. So I got a bunch of dudes that I take fishing that have awesome wives and we've been talking about doing it for a while. So yeah, we're going to take a bunch of <clears throat> bunch of my guys and their ladies to um, Belize in 2025. And we're going to go to a uh, turn of flats and we're going to chase tarpon and um, permit bunch of, and bonefish and a bunch of couples. So you're doing the other swinging. Oh God. Yeah. I'll be going by myself <clears throat> um, as I am single, but I'll be kind of the host. Oh, maybe I won't be single in two years. You never know. No promises. Uh, anyways, I put solar res not flexible on here. I want that shit to, to lock in tight. Um, so the, the real shit that I, that I use on like my steelhead or musky flies. Um, yeah. So that's what she looks like. Um, if I can put it off the vice, give you it. Wow. I guess it's gonna, yeah, some flashes hanging on the side. Well, so the pink flash looks cool though. I'm not yeah, it looks NGL. cool. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the fly. Um, We've like never fished Grand Cayman. That sounds cool. Mm, I don't even know where that's at. Bahamas? Me, me neither. It just sounds cool. I think so. Oh, Cayman Islands? He just got back from Belize. It's phenomenal. Awesome. I can't wait. Uh, oh, it sounds like maybe Jeff Perrin had a trip out there. That one actually looks pretty good. Oh, and then putting the hook on. I'm not going to do it because I will fucking hook myself and lose my shit. Um, but you know how to do it. You just pinch the wire and you throw it through a hook. It's, it, if... Gotta go the right way though. It, there's only one way. If you put it on, you will know that it's the wrong way. Um, but that's basically it. Fuck, we still have 18 minutes. I know, I was thinking the same thing. You gotta tell me when I'm tying too fast. You know? I did, it crossed my mind. I was like, ooh, we should slow down. It's only like five steps. Mm -hmm. I mean, that just goes to show you what we started like 7.20, so it, it takes like 20 minutes. Um, could, and it could go faster, obviously, when you're yeah, just tying straight and not blah, doing blah, blah, all this blah. bullshit. Um, but the cool thing that I like about it is, um, and does it matter? I don't know. Probably not. But that little hot spot back there. Does it feel hot? Yeah. There we go. Oh, and it's running out of battery too. But oh. I got the fly done. I did it. I got the fly done. <laughs> fucking Jack. Sup, bitches. <laughs> Look at this fucking motherfucker. <laughs> That's harassment. Yeah, man. I mean, hit me up in the DMs. I, I'm not really like, I used to book out the whole, you know, winter as much as I could way in advance, but Mother Nature just sh -sh -ah, uppercuts me so bad That's that right. um, I kind of got like a group of guys and gals that are good fishermen and we just go when it's right. You know, I'm not making a ton of money like I used to in the winter, but I'm happier. <laughs>